Well, we'll make a start. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's um, session um, with BGL and FuSign um, on our inaugural integration launch. My name is Daniel Tramontana from BGL Corporate Solutions, and um, I'll be introducing a couple of pretty special people this morning that are going to take you through the session. Um, just before we do go on, um, the session will go for approximately an hour. It'll be a combination of slides and then also an actual demonstration of the integration and how the whole digital signing process works. Um, you can ask questions during the session. I will moderate the questions and I will um, just jump in um, between Melissa and Jeevan's presentation as to the, the, when the right time is to ask those questions. So I'm happy to moderate those. So please feel free to ask the questions. And um, all I can say is that you're in for a treat. And um, today I have with me Melissa Voss, who's the head of clients and partners, and also a co-founder of FuseWorks. Um, I've known Melissa for a little while, and I just love her passion and enthusiasm for this space. And they've done some really great things. And I'm sure you're going to be very delighted to hear from her and what she has to say around this powerful integration. So Melissa, welcome, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, the, the other person that will be joining us also is Jeevan, um, who's the head of ecosystem at BGL Corporate Solutions. Now, I work for Jeevan, well, work with Jeevan for almost 15 years, if I'm not wrong, Jeevan, is that right? That's correct. And um, he came to us as a graduate accountant, came through support, ended up in the Simple Fund desktop product team, then went to Simple Fund 360 product team, and now and then over to the API team, and now he's running the whole ecosystem, which is all about the connectivity. And Jeevan's team has been responsible for the rolling out of and the connection of BGL with FuSign. And there's no better person to be able to demonstrate how this works. So we're delighted to be able to present this to you. It is a great product. It's a great, it's, it, it is a great feature that we've built within the software. The digital signing solution is fantastic. But more importantly, you're dealing with one, a product that works, but you're dealing with great people who are passionate about what they do. And um, with any software decision and any decision that's made when it comes to what you build within your, your practices and how you engage with your clients, people and service are really important. And the two that are going to be taking the session today are some of the best. So I'm going to hand it over to them. Um, I know you're in for a treat. And um, if you have any questions, please do ask and I'll hand it over to, to Jeevan and Melissa. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, well, thank you for that kind introduction. Um, look, from FuseWorks' point of view, we have absolutely loved working with the BGL team. So I, I can't talk any more highly of, of a business that's doing the right thing. So yeah, just for all of you on the line, if you're BGL clients, um, you, you probably um, mirror mirror that re re response. Um, so today's session um, is really about, I guess, me giving you an opportunity just to, to explain what FuseSign is um, in at its core. Um, the main part of today is going to be the integration demonstration and Jeevan's going to take us through that. And then we'll round out with just what we're doing for BGL clients when it comes to the FuseSign pricing um, and how you can move forward with that if you like what you see today. So um, any questions at all, ask away. Um, Daniel's on, um, on standby for answering things, for interrupting us where he, um, where he deems fit. Um, and we'll also loop back at the end as well. Um, if, there's any, um, if there's any time for questions at the end, we're happy to, happy to go through those. Okay. Um, just a little demo of, of how you um, ask a question for those that um, haven't been on Zoom lately, which uh, probably none of us. Great. Okay, so um, FuseWorks. So before we, I guess, dive into FuseSign, to give some context to who we are, and look, a lot of you on the line might know us by now. I'm a chartered accountant myself. FuseWorks was born out of our own accounting firm here in Brisbane, and we are here to solve real problems in the industry. So really, as accountants, um, we want to give you tools to do your jobs um, better and free up your time. And FuSign is such an important part of, of what we do. So moving to why choose FuSign um, and look, um, You'll see it in action within BGL, um, and that in, a, in its core is just a, a fabulous integration and some, some huge value in automation. But it's really important when you're considering a digital signing platform that you are 
ensuring you're leveraging a solution that gives your clients a simple and elegant signing solution. Um, and we also want to make sure that you're balancing um, the, I guess, the, the business needs as well. Um, there's lots of compliance documents that your firm needs to send out. Um, so it needs to be simple for your team to, to, to manage the documents out. So we've really built FuseSign to balance those needs, um, business needs and client experience. Um, it's based on lots of market research um, to provide that purpose-built platform for accountants. And look, we're getting lots of, um, lots of uh, other industries jumping on board as well, but it really is at its core is, is designed to, to help us as accountants. Um, lots of our uh, current clients were frustrated with the, particularly the cost, but more importantly, the lack of understanding um, of what was really important to them in a signing platform. So we built FuSign. Um, it is flexible enough to have every member of your team be able to use it for all your signing needs. So um, we give your clients the same great experience, regardless of whether the documents are coming direct from BGL or you're sending documents directly from FuseSign for everything else that your business needs to send out. So tax returns, engagement letters, BASs, um, there's lots and lots of things that we need to send out to our clients. It is built for accountants, truly built for us. Um, we listen to feedback um, and we value that feedback. Um, it's affordable, intuitive, secure, mobile friendly. Um, and look, importantly, there's, there's features in there that just make it really easy to use and, and easy for you to, um, to just to do your job quicker. <laughs> um, and of course, legally binding um, and lots of validation and importantly, Australian hosted design built here in Brisbane. Um, and look, we have great, we take great pride in our, in our team based in Brisbane and we have a team of people that do generally care about you and the product and the value it can bring. Um, our approach for large firms is really great um, when it comes to multiple teams, directors, divisions, um, adding security and branding options per team, ability to manage the, the practice um, in firm-wide dashboards, and giving you lots of control over elements of document signing where there's lots of moving parts. So a large family group with lots of signers and lots of documents, and um, there's lots of control over who can see, who can sign, who, who doesn't even have access. So that's probably one of the really, really um, important parts of why we've built FuSign the way we have. Um, and the validity around the signing comes with a, um, a fully backed audit trail as well. The BGL component, which is what we're going to really focus on um, now, is adding so much value. Um, so firms, and look, there's probably some firms on the line today that are already using FuSign, which is awesome. They're using it for lots and lots of things um, to send out to their clients. What BGL integration means for you now is you can hook up your same FuSign account and leverage the same client experience across the board. So anything coming from BGL. Um, we are super excited with the integration because BGL like really have a smooth workflow from within their product. And that when you connect FuSign to that, it just unlocks so many powerful features. So if you're not using digital signing within the BGL suite, I would suggest you jump into a trial of FuSign and just give it a go. Um, there's really nothing to lose. If you're using something else for digital signing, you know, we'd love you to have a, have a try of FuSign and see how it can add value um, as well. So that's it from me. I want to hand over to Jeevan to, to talk through and, and show, show how great it is in terms of the product. Um, but I just wanted to give you that little, um, I guess, overview first, that it's more than um, signing within BGL as well. We want the consistent experience for all of your client documents. Okay, Jeevan. Okay, thank you, Melissa. So I'm going to take you through a demonstration of, um, I guess my main demonstration will be using CAS 360 and then I'll show uh, Simplefund 360 because we do have users for both platforms uh, logged in. So we'll just take you through the, I guess the entire process, but it is very similar and the workflow has been designed to be almost identical in both products. So the first, the first uh, step to do is actually set up the integration. So once you do have a few sign account, um, if you go to your app switcher, in the top right hand corner. So you can either do this from Simple Fund 360 or CAS 360. Um, select the little app switcher and go to integrations. 
So this will show you for your firm, any integrations that you do have set up already. Um, so you can see I've got a couple that are uh, logged out one and then obviously one including their FUSON. So uh, with the FUSON, um, if you haven't got it set up, if you go under, under practice apps, and then across to digital signing, you have over there, um, click on the links, it'll take you to the wizard in terms of setting that up. And it's really just authorizing um, BGL to access your few sign accounts and be able to uh, do that final level there of integration. So let's now go into CAS360. So what I'm gonna do is prepare a form 484. So company change there uh, for a particular company. We'll go through and prepare that and go through and do something for digital signing. So let's go through today. I'll prepare a very basic change, which is going to be for a uh, change of registered address. So I'll go through and prepare my change document. So in this case, the um, company is going to change its registered address. Okay, so in CAS 360, but the workflows uh, remains the same. So you'll go through um, and you'll, uh, you'll see anything that's, uh, that needs to be done directly in the same document production screen that you're currently utilizing. So you don't need to go through and change anything that needs to be done. So you can see here that CAS 360 is automatically flagged the documents which can be digitally signed and you can see the little signing icon which does display next to those as well. Okay, so if I go down the bottom there under um, electronic signing options, okay, so where there's where there's the flexibility to um, have multiple people sign, et cetera, you'll see the relevant signing options display here. Um, and what you will see take place is anything that um, we'll go through um, is any of the validations take place. So let's say there's a director or member that doesn't have a email address within CAS 360, you'll be prompted to enter any of those missing details in there automatically. Um, so what I'm gonna do is click now uh, send. So you can see I've just got, sorry, validation there for my agent. Okay, so if I send that, It'll go through, it's validated the fields and it's given me there a preview there of the um, email. So obviously that email template can be customized to your liking and can be uh, reviewed there before we send out. Okay, so what's taking place now is that document pack is being prepared. It'll go through and it'll be emailed to there to the relevant uh, signatories. Okay, so they'll each receive an email link um, which is directly there from CAS360. Uh, and hopefully that has come through in just a second. Um, here we go now. Um, that has the relevant details and for, again, each signature that needs to take place, um, they receive the details of what takes place. So you can see it's the same email template that we saw there within CAS. Okay, and then they'll need to just go through, click on the process to actually review that. So that, that signing link that they received is unique for each signatory. Okay, so you'll get the link here to review the documents. Okay, and then what will take place in terms of the security between BGL um, and FUSIGN is that the, it will have that necessary validations to make sure that obviously the authentication taking place is secure and the right person there is signing. So let's go through um, and sign this particular one. Okay, so go through and we can actually go through and um, start signing. Okay, so if I click the sign, okay, I'm just going to, I've got here just a basic uh, example. So go through and get Mac to sign it. Okay, and now done. Okay, so we've gone through, we've signed the document, we're all done. The bundle's closed and we can close that particular tab. Okay, long back through into CAS360, what will take place is I will receive, um, once that document comes through, that the document has been digitally signed. Okay, this one's probably just a little bit delayed. Go through. Okay, with any documents that come through and they have been signed, I have the ability to view not only the signed documents, but any documents have been sent. For example, there's one here I've sent, I've sent previously. Um, I have the ability to also send reminders um, directly here from CAS360 and bring that through. So when that notification notification does come through, um, I have the ability then to lodge a document directly um, that's secure that takes place. Obviously, where all uh, where there's multiple people that need to sign the document, um, everyone that needs to you know particularly sign that document needs to have done that prior. To, in, uh, to obviously lodging the document. So you will see that, that come through and takes place. Okay, in terms of the documents that, that have been signed, um, you can see this one's come through now. I've got the ability here to view the document or lodge directly from the notification within CAS 360. Okay, so that's um, you know quite a neat feature. And I'm just gonna click on view there. Um, so you can see now I've got the transparency of the documents which are originally generated out of CAS, the documents signed by uh, here with by a few sign. Um, there directly and can lodge accordingly. 
jump across here now into Simple Fund 360. So obviously this can be utilized um, by Simple Fund 360 and also Simple Invest 360. So it can be utilized by either products or both um, and go through and do a very similar process. Okay, so if I go across there to the report screen, again, process is very similar. Um, that I'll be able to go in, prepare the necessary uh, report pack that I would like to create. So in this case here, I've got a, um, a you know, a couple of documents here that need to be signed. I'm actually going to add in another document uh, just to do as another check. Okay, so once that once I've created the report pack and the documents that uh, I do need to sign are in that report pack, I can click on the digital signing button, which will take me across. Again, any validations for any of the signatories will display here. So you can see here, I've got two signatories uh, with two different email addresses. So one's being the accountant, one being the um, trustee. A very basic example. Um, then go through and uh, go through and does those validations, and I can enter the email addresses directly from this screen. So it'll make that process very easy, where I don't have uh, the necessary um, email addresses input there into the system. And obviously, once you input it the first time, you don't need to do it again for that either SMSF or the company in CAS three hundred and sixty. Okay, so you do have some additional um, features here in Simple Farm, which will are coming very soon into CAS as well. So an option here to is again SMS authentication for those who like to utilize two-factor authentication. Okay, you can enter in the mobile phone numbers. Again, it's a one-stop process where they will have to enter in a SMS code in order to sign the document. So that will need to be, you know, obviously take place and just has that added uh, level of security for each of your signing documents there. Okay, so uh, what can also be done here within Simple Fund 360 now is any third party documents, so say an invoice generated outside of the system can be imported here into the pack, or it could be, for example, a letter, a letter or a minute that you've generated using Word or something that's outside of the system. So they can be generated and inserted here with the actual pack itself. Okay, I'll click on confirm to the next screen as well. So again, you get a email preview that you can uh, customize there as well. Um, and you do have the ability to change the order of signing. So in this case, as we've got the compilation report in there, I would like to change uh, and can I actually select who's actually going to sign first. So in this case, I can move John to group two. So in this case, what it's going to do is anyone that's in group one will need to actually sign the document first. And the actual email and links will not be sent to group two until everyone in the first group completes those that signing. So it creates a basically an order of signing. Okay. In terms of the digital signing process, I won't go through and demonstrate it again, but it's the exact same process for simple funds, no different. Once the signed document comes in, it will come through and will notify the accountant or the, the sender of the document that that signed document has come through. So simple fund does it slightly different by sending an email um, to the sender of the document. So you will have that there. Um, in terms of demonstration, that'll be it. So I'm gonna jump back into the PowerPoint. <clears throat> Jeevan and Mel, just got a number of questions here before we jump back to the PowerPoint. Um, and I'll, I'll go through all of them. So there's a few here. So when we have a few side subscription, we can use it within the integration or separately. Mel, I think that'll be one for you. Oh, sorry. That, if we have the... So if we have a few signed subscription, can we use it within the integration or can we also use it outside of the integration? Ah, uh, yeah, if you've got a few sign um, subscription, you can use it standalone in FuseSign and you can also use it from um, BGL as well. Um, Jeevan, just um, Paul Bailey said that he had a, an error message when clicking on integration saying that was empty exception status 404, but I think that'll be something that we can speak to Paul about. Yeah, we can speak offline about what's happening there. Yeah, cool. So Paul, we'll, we'll come back to you on that. Um, Michael Glossop has said, can a client purchase a subscription of FuseSign direct without going through their accountant? Yes, they certainly can. Um, literally go to FuseSign.com and click download a free trial and then you can activate your own account from within the software after you've happy you you like it awesome and from sarah o'brien um are placeholders automatically created by CAS and fusign i'll answer that one so yes the the placeholders are automatically created by bgl so either within simple fund 360 or cas 360 um, and obviously we pass those through to fusign so they know exactly where each placeholder is so it's a it's a combination of both. So it's um, it's BGL creating the placeholders and FUSIGN utilizing those. 
Um, from Marina Tisha, does the client need to have a digital certificate? Uh, I'll answer that. That's, the answer is probably no. So I guess not to be confused, the, the, the signing technology that's be, that gets utilised when signing the documents is about authenticating, um, I guess, who the person is. Are they who they say they is? And has it been sent to the right person? Um, there is no, there is no utilisation, utilization, I guess, of a digital certificate um, to digitally sign the document using a certificate. Um, and does a copy of the site, this is from Paul Mente, um, does a copy of the signed document get sent back to the client for them to view, save? Very good question. Um, it's something me and Melissa have just been discussing actually just last night. Um, at, at the moment, the accountant will need to download and send that through, um, but we should have something very shortly well, well, where it does get sent through as well. So yeah. that, that'll, be, that'll be a feature that we add to the system where the client will also be get a, a copy of it too. Correct. So hopefully is hopefully hopefully very soon. So in terms of, you know, I don't want to get put an exact uh, time frame on it for pressure, yeah. but uh, yeah, hopefully very soon. Um, yeah. And just they, probably just jumping in there, that is currently a feature in FuseSign that um, a copy of everything that is signed gets sent to the client and back to the accounting firm. So that is definitely the intention that that will be the case within within BGL as well. Yeah. Yeah. And look, and I think it's important we work through these questions. So we're going to be here for a few mm. minutes, which will be fine. Um, mm. Now, can the signature be uploaded um, as an image? The answer is no to that. Um, the the simple signing solution is type your name in, and it it puts your digital signature onto the documents. Um, there's no need for an image to be uploaded. Um, the, the, the way digital signing works is it's validating you as a, a, as a recipient with, with all of the, the authentication steps. So there's no need for that. So we haven't gone down that path. And Pauline Rudel says, does the signed document only come back to CAS once all parties have signed the document? Yes. So we wait for all signatories uh, to sign the document before it comes back to either CAS 360 or Simple Plan 360. Yeah. Um, there's also just a couple of others in the chat. So there's quite a few here. So oh. we can't get back to all of them. Um, I apologize, but we'll do our best. If I already have the emails addresses in FuseSign, do I need to also set them up in CAS 360? I believe that will be the case. Yes, it will um, be. Stephen, yeah. Sorry, I missed that question. Yeah, yeah, no, the email addresses will be need to be um, into the CAS 360 or Superfund 360 contacts. Right, yes. Yeah. So we we BGL I guess send BGL sends the email addresses to for your sign, so it's required to be input at the at the point in time within BGL. Yep. Um, plus BGL is the one sending the emails to the client as well. Yep. I'm just going to keep working through this. If someone has an email address saved in their contact, can you edit it at this stage as a one time change? Uh, you will need to you need to edit it if they've already got an email address. You'll need to edit it in the contact screen of either product. Correct. They have to be done within the, the contacts within the software. Yeah. Um, are there any benefits of sending the reminders from BGL rather than FuSign directly, or is it just a personal preference? Jim, and I think I'll let you answer that because you know about your system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I suppose there's probably there's probably no benefit as such of, uh, of either as long as the client's getting the reminder. Um, I, I would just say that the only difference is um, with, from within BGL, they're getting the context of the um, of the potentially your email template that you might have set up, um, and already additional things like what are they signing. Um, so for FuSign, we might only have a FuSign might only have limited information um, in in terms of saying okay. In this case, the example I showed before, like the four eight four is being signed. CAS 360 has all the information where FuSign may or may not have all their information. Um, so, so I think it's, yeah, it's, from the FuSign uh, point of view, yeah. if it's gone from CAS or, you know, or Simple Fund, FuSign won't be sending any reminders to the clients. Yeah. Um, I'll keep going through these because I think there's many that are, that are really good. Um, do we need to have one subscription for each user? No, you um, don't. No, you don't. Um, with FuseSign, and that's probably one of the, the good um, price points, um, we, don't, um, we don't cap users. So you can have every member of your team have access to FuseSign. But for a business to be hooked up to BGL, you really only need a business account. It doesn't hinge off a user. So anybody would have access to that. Yep. Um, so when it comes to... Um, 
SMSF verification function, you can obviously have that turned on and or off, Jeevan and Mel. Uh, yes, the SMS at the moment is optional. Uh, what we'll be looking in the future, we have some um, requests for it, is if a firm would like a firm wide setting to uh, enforce it for all, uh, I guess, entities, um, we will have that option available at the moment, but at the moment it's completely optional. Um, from our perspective, uh, I guess, Melissa, if they are uploading directly into FewSign, they do have that flexibility as well. So. Yeah, you've got full flexibility um, at, a, um, at a business level of what authentication um, you want as a bare minimum for your business, so for people to use, and SMS is one of them. Do you want SMS? Do you even want um, SMS reminders? Do you want SMS notifications? Or do you want um, the validation um, via email or SMS? Yep. And look, there's a few questions around this, but it's predominantly around the reminder systems. Do you want to just, just be a little bit clearer around the reminder systems as to how they work and then at what point does that document then able to be lodged? Um, for example, with ASIC, at what point does that happen, Jeevan? Yep. Um, so we're, with the reminder system, uh, it's all it's all built within CAS 360 at the moment, so not to be confused, I guess, from the reminders from FUSIGN. I think there is nothing, correct me if I'm wrong, there's nothing stopping you in utilising the reminder system within FUSIGN, but I, I believe it's off for BGL documents by default. I could be wrong there, but... Yeah, um, it's off. Yep. Yeah. Um, so the the, notif the reminders are coming from um, CAS 360, so they can either be sent on an ad hoc basis um, or we can set them on a um, fixed day basis as well. Um, will few sign order remind clients to sign, say, every three days until action from Vivi Chen? Short answer is no, I guess. Um, so as, as I mentioned, by default, we, we um, turn off any of the reminders from few signs so unless they... Um, can uh, the good answer? I don't know, Melissa. Is can they override that default option? So uh, I'm not sure. We'll um, we'll get that. Um, oh, possibly we'll get that and, offline. Yeah, we'll, and we can yeah. pop that in to the help. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, can we add um, additional signing fields to the documents that are uploaded? Uh, from within BGL, no. I guess uh, at the at the moment it's not a functionality we have, so that's a. a you know, BGL option, but it's something we are looking to explore in the future. Um, however, if they do upload the document directly into FUSIGN, um, they do have that facility. Um, so do we have to have a subscription to PDF to do this? No. Um, Jeevan, this is one for you, and I think it's an important one. Um, this is from Carol. There, there are quite a few documents that cannot be digitally signed in Simple Fund, like the trustee declaration for the ATO, additional minutes, et cetera. Is there a way around this? I've tried uploading third-party docs, but it's the digital signing is not embedded. Uh, no. So I think the best thing to do is click on the feedback button that you'd like to utilise those, and the Simple Fund team can address those. So um, most, I would say the majority of, of documents produced by Simple Fund that have a signatory field can be digital signed, but it's still not all. Um, so we are looking to prove those. I know we've had a, a few requests of late uh, for BAS returns, and that's something the team is working on. So I think the best thing to do is on Simple Fund, click on the feedback button, uh, provide that feedback directly to the Simple Fund team, and they can look to incorporate that in the future. I know you'll love this one, Jeevan, from Vicky Bergen, but for security, can separate PIN numbers be sent via SMS to multiple signees to use if there's a shared email? Uh, yes, so that, that's our plan. So at, at the moment, what we're doing, because SMS is not or fit, not um, mandated, we don't allow shared email addresses. How we're looking to overcome that is to have, if you are using shared email addresses, that there is a mandatory SMS in that, in that case. Um, and, in, and in that situation, you would need separate phone numbers. Um, so you can't have, obviously, two people who, um, I know practically, you know, in a real life example, that could be a, a valid use case. But from a legal point of view, we can't validate that they're two separate people. So we do require them to be two separate email addresses and um, two, or sorry, same, it can be the same email address, but two different phone numbers. Um, so just a couple of questions around licensing and charging. So one of the questions from Jenny here, is the few sign charge per signature tag or per document pack? It's per document pack. Um, so that there and based on your subscription level with FUSIGN, then that will determine the, the credit that's applied or the value of the credit that's applied. Um, but there's also one here for Melissa that I assume the FUSIGN credit is used as soon as the document is emailed for signature, not only when it is actually signed. Uh, 
That's right. The, the credit's consumed on sending. And I like to think of it as if you're putting something in the post, you pay your dollar ten for your stamp, it's gone. So that's the way we've, um, we've treated that. From Liliana, um, will it be sent to the sender upon completion? Currently, it's, it's not working within the integration. I think you answered that before, Jeevan. Yeah, so currently, uh, currently Simple Fund sends it to the sender, but um, we we need to address that we can. So we should have something in the very near future. And when I say near future, hopefully within the next week or two. I don't want to put exact date on it. Um, mm -hmm. but we'll we'll address that issue. Yeah, and, and the reminders really can't be sent through few sign direct. They're sent through CAS three hundred and sixty. Correct. Um, so we'll we'll put out some more detailed instructions around the uh, reminders because it seems like we do have a lot of questions around that. Yeah. Yep. Um, so we've answered the one about the, the charge per document pack. Um, would the auditor also get a copy of the signed documents if they have auditor access to the fund or may choose what stays in the document line in BGL? Sorry, cut out there, Danny. Uh, oh, no, just about the auditor. Will the auditor get oh. a notification that it's been signed? They don't get a notification, but if they've got access to Simple Fund 360, they are able to access that document like anything else. Um, so, you know, it's up to the firm if they want to restrict access to that document or view it. Um, in the, you know, in the future, if we add some more, you know, again, if the, if the auditor is one of the signatories, obviously, um, in the future, we, they will have the ability to auto get that document. Um, but let's say, let's have the auditors not part of a signatory um, yep. and, and part of that report pack. Uh, they do have access to the document screen. Uh, they could download it for there. The other option is for the accountant to put it into the work paper screen if the auditor has access to that as well. Um, reminders aren't charged as credits. No, that's um, definitely not the case. Um, Tracy has said um, she's worried that a document may get stuck in the loop if an email address does not respond. What can we do? Uh, well, I guess you know, with with the reminders, we're not sending we're not sending uh, constant reminders from from a BGL perspective, so uh, they wouldn't be email daily basis. But however, that you're right that in terms of that document is not obviously uh, classified as signed until the uh, signatory does sign the document. So uh, un unless they actually sign it, that document is you know not complete. So it, it's not quite stuck in a loop as such, but it's it's still I guess you know not complete. So you know, sometimes it is an education uh, process with your clients. Um, and, we're, you know, what we've seen in the past is firms that do utilise this um, do have, you know, an extreme, I don't know if you've got any detailed stats on this, but uh, the ones I've seen in the past is within 48 hours, there is quite a, uh, a high signing rate, you know, in terms of where the document was sent. Yeah, I think it comes down to um, the internal process in, in the practice. If you're sending stuff out, um, in the past, you've sent out in the mail and then you've been, you know, trying to work out what's been gone, what's come back. At least within the system, you'll have a nice clear um, list of everything that's gone out. And, you know, at some stage, if clients don't respond, then there needs to be an internal follow up around, well, can we get those signed documents back? So it's no different to what we've always done. You'll just find it'll be a lot easier because people are, uh, are able to sign quicker. I'll let you continue with the presentation. Still a number of questions and we'll do it at the end um, and I'll, I'll just moderate them and just see if I can pick up common themes, okay? Yeah, sure. Um, so we'll go to the next slide, Jeevan. And look, we, we, we've kind of answered a little bit about this, but what we're, um, what we're offering for BGL, and this, is, this um, comes down to our, our, the way we price um, our, our product. The special offer for BGL clients is you can use any of our um, few sign plans from the business light plan up. So like I said, we don't price per user. It is priced per, um, you know, as, as you need it. So um, you, you consume credits as you need them. So all of our monthly plans are on our website. There's no lock-in contracts um, and you can, you know, choose the plan that's best for your, for your business. The usual approach um, with, with the way we price is a credit is used for each signer. So if you're sending to mum and dad, it would be consumed two credits. However, the offer for BGL is that anything that goes from BGL will only ever be one credit, regardless of the number of signers or the number of documents in a pack. 
So that's a really, um, it's a really good offer. Um, the price point for our credits across our range of uh, products go from $1.20 down to 90 cents. So if you're a really high volume user, you'll be paying as low as 90 cents to send things, which, you know, less than the cost of a stamp. Um, the, the approach with FewSign, like I mentioned earlier, it's a practice wide signing solution. So use it for anything else um, that you need to send out directly from FewSign as well as everything coming directly out of EGL and, and leverage the power of that integration. Um, the um, what's next, we'll just move to, um, sorry, the next slide, Jeevan, um, in, in terms of getting started. So um, there's lots of questions, which we'll, we do have time to answer a few more. Um, the best way to, to really check it out is to jump in and just download a free trial. Um, talk to us if you've got any questions. We're working with the BGL team. This is a very new integration and we're very happy to hear feedback and make sure that we, um, you know, deliver um, on what we've promised. Um, so start your 14-day trial, hook it up. It's really easy. Um, we've got great support teams. Both are committed to getting you started and underway. Um, and like I said, there's no lock-in contract. So at the point where you're ready to say, yep, we love this, we're ready to get started, you can um, upgrade and, and, and lock in a plan for, for the next month um, based on, on what you think you might need. And we're happy to talk to you a bit about that as well. So fewsign.com um, backslash BGL is, is all the information you need about that. And, and on there is some, lots of resources around um, how you set up the integration in BGL, because you have a very good um, help area. So, so jump into that as well. So I think that's probably um, it from us. Um, we'll, we'll use the opportunity now to, to go in and, and answer more questions. And I see there's lots that I'm <laughs> scrolling through. <laughs> what I've done is I will just, I'll, I'll, I'll get maybe Flavia and Skyla just to cut and paste all the chats and also answer an open question. So if we can't get to some of them, we'll come back to people direct, um, personally. Yeah. Okay, so if I can get Flavia and Skylar to, to select all copy paste and then we'll shoot them through, that'll be great. Um, so just a couple other things that have come through for Melissa. We're also looking at implementing Fuse Docs in the next months. If we sign up to Fuse Sign and implement Fuse Docs at a later stage, is there a bundle deal available? Yeah, we're certainly happy to talk to you about that. And look, that's probably more of a one-on-one -on -one discussion. So just give me a call and we can talk about how what you need and, and how we... Um, can deliver it for you for sure. Um, unused credits, do they roll over the next month? So month to month plans, you get credits in a month and they don't roll over. We do have the option for you to jump into a year plan. And the benefit of that is they do roll over. You get all your credits, credits today and you can use them whenever you like. So a number of our clients, although I'm not a fan of locking people in, hence why we've given the monthly option, the, the benefit of those annual ones is the seasonality of signing and how we're sending out documents in an accounting firm can be quite tied around bazers and, you know, um, the months where we do lots of company setups like June. So an annual plan like that might be more attractive for you if you have that, you know, you know large ebbs and flows over the year. Um, Theresa Boyce has said, when creating a change of address for a husband and wife as director of a company, this produces multiple documents. Is each document counted as a document pack or does each document trigger a separate signing email and treat it as multiple bundles? No, it's treated as one. Um, definitely. Um, so how do we... The way to think of a pack. I was going to say, if anyone, the easiest way to think of a pack <laughs> is the documents generated out of CAS or Simple Farm, if you're putting all that into one envelope manually in the post, it's no different to a pack that we're sending electronically. So, yeah. Just think of it conceptually like that for those who are probably used to signing on paper. Yeah. That's right. And if you go and do, you know, need to send something to them the next day, that's a different pack. It's a different bit of mail. So, that, yeah. That's... Um, got a few more here. Can, can we see a demo of the financial reports for Simple Fund that are sent to a client for re-signing? Um, what we might do there, Dan, is if it's okay, we'll get someone to get in touch with you and go through that direct so we we can just go through that with you not a problem so um, I, did, I did show the sending part and the actual signing part is no different to the 404 which i showed before which is a different document there is no there is no difference in signing the document between symbol fund and cas 
from Nicole Lynch, if you have 10 people that need to sign, do you need to send it to each individual email? It can be just sent to one and then to, to then get each person to sign from that one email. You will require an email um, at the moment. Um, that may change in the future where we do allow alternate email addresses uh, potentially, but even still those signatories um, do require a, an email as such. Yeah, and I guess the, the point there, um, just to make, if, if you send one email out and have 10 people um, sign, how do we know? How do we validate who is actually signing? So we need something unique for a signer to have confidence that that person has signed those documents. And we've used the email address as that unique piece of um, information. Um, for those of you who are listening, there will be a recording of the webinar available, so you can definitely um, go, go back to that and, um, and see that one there. From Viola, it'd be great to have a feature where you can complete a signing pack on, say, two of the three nominated directors and manually complete the signing if one director is not responding and the doc still upload into CAS 360 with a completion certificate. Is this possible? It's not possible at the moment, but it is something we've discussed um, and uh, potentially looking at. It is something FuSign have uh, directly on their site, um, so and it's something we will look to incorporate. Um, our biggest our biggest concern was someone clicking on that button accidentally, and then it marks the you can no longer complete the document signing process. So we were just looking to make sure we had all the safeguards in, in place before we uh, rolled that out. Um, I've got one here that's come up a couple of times. So how, how do we suggest getting around sending invoices through CAS 360 and utilising FuSign? Will we have to start sending annual reviews separately so the client can keep a copy of the invoices for themselves? If I'm understanding the collect, uh, the, um, it directly, if they, if they want to attach an invoice for the accounting firm as part of the pack, they can insert that in to CAS 360 or um, Simple Farm 360, it just doesn't have any signing fields if they need to sign any part of that invoice. Yeah, yeah. and I think the other point there, Jeevan, is people need, or well, they'd like a copy of that sent to them after they've signed, so they actually have a copy of the invoice, but by the sounds of it, that's not too far away. That's not too far away, we'll hopefully address that as well. So. Yeah, yep. Um, okay, if you're already using DocuSign from Shane Tag within CAS 360, is it simple to switch the few sign? Uh, it's, again, something something we've actually uh, just funny enough been discussing, but the the issue at the moment, I guess, from a BGL, we only allow one signing provider to be integrated at a time. So the the cutover in terms of switching off one and turning one up on is fairly simple. Um, the issue will be any any documents that are still required to be signed uh, within DocuSign, you will need to just manually import those into Simple Fund or CAS. Um, and, and manually comp complete those yeah. processes. So the, so the client experience is still the same. They can still sign off on it. There's just a little bit of, you know, short-term pain for long-term gain, I, I guess, when it comes to just um, finalising that back in the system. Yeah, I've had some clients talk to me about that and um, they did just draw a line in the sand and went, no, nah, we're, we're connecting over to FuSign and we've got a few out, but we know we can deal with them directly in DocuSign or what other platform and just manually finalise it in CAS. Um, what, if any, documents do few signs store during and after the process and how can we, the accounting practice, see them? Do we have the option to delete them from few sign storage area from Kay Cooper? Yeah, so Kay, I can answer that. We've got, um, we have essentially a read-only copy of everything that's going through, through BGL in our system. So you can see exactly what's happening. You just can't act on things from there because we're living in the control with BGL for that. Um, it'll go through the same process of it, um, like a normal few sign um, bundle. It gets finalised and then it gets archived. The archiving step, um, we only keep those documents for 60 days and then they're, they're voided. So we're not keeping your documents in the cloud forevermore. We're giving you a bit of a window and then they're gone. Um, from Sarah Chin. Being a FuSign champion, I completed the initial integration set up between FuSign and BGL via BGL. Her co-worker has requested signatures from her account, but the requester name showing in FuSign is her own. Have I missed something in the setup process? It might be, might be something I can take offline and just review what's happening there because it, it might be the case of the fact that, um, I think it was Sarah that originally asked the question, um, has authenticated... Uh, FuSign against BGL. So we're obviously sending everything 
um, as her. We are sending both both bits of information, but it is something um, we can review possibly Melissa between the two teams um, to see how they're being displayed. Um, but that's probably the shortest answer is that because it's um, because it's been authenticated by the first person, um, it's it's almost like sharing a login into FewSign as such. Yeah, and I guess from our point of view, we generally have the emails always coming from a set name, so the business name, um, right. rather than an individual. So that would be my approach, um, just making sure that we've we've got that funneling through. Um, are the documents stored in cloud base and safe? Our in subscription and future date are we still able to are still able to retrieve the old documents from Alicia? And then I've had something similar from Teresa Boyce. Where is your data stored and where is it mirrored? Yes, yeah, so for us, we're um, in Australian hosted Azure. Um, like I said, we only retain those documents after you've archived them for 60 days. Um, I'm not sure on what happens on BGL side, so Jeevan can, can comment on that. Yeah, uh, so BGL is hosted using AWS in Australia, if anyone who doesn't know that um, and is a current client. Um, we, we provide you access um, for up to five years for any documents that um, uh, once your subscription ends. So uh, we can extract that and give them, I suppose, up to five years after that. Day. Is there an ability to connect few signs to Dropbox? And this will be a popular one going forward. Just to save back the documents, is that the question? Yeah, for future reference. So we've done this with DocuSign and it was, it was proven to be a, an integral part of retrieving copies of old documents in case they've been missed. So is there a way to automatically Yeah, yeah. look, um, currently, no, we don't have a direct integration back with that, but that's definitely something I'll take back to the development team. Yeah, that will be an important one. Um, Melissa, you mentioned the annual package. How does the annual price work? Is it just monthly? on a 12 month business plan with 12 credits? Uh, no, it's not. It's monthly, it's annually, you pay today, you get all your credits today and they last a year. And you get a discount for, depending on the plan as well. So again, it, it's the choice of the, the business as to whether they want the, the discount and, and what that signing, um, you know, the, the spread of the signing is like. If, it, if it's fairly consistent month to month, you know, our business light plan is a good place to start and we allow um, top up. So you can just buy a few more in a certain month if you need it. And they last three months. So we're, we're sort of quite fair. We don't need you to lock into a year. I'm very happy for you to be month to month. And just if you need more in a certain month, use the auto top ups or do manual top ups. And Jeevan, if the document's not signed, will it prevent you from lodging the document within CAS 360? No. So there's, I don't think there's any limitation there, to my knowledge. But something that we should definitely look at yeah, to base say that the, the, so yeah. that's something we, we can definitely yeah, again depends on yeah it depends on uh there is cases though however where you, where the the document sent out for digital signing the directors download a copy of that sign it on paper and send it back in on paper though so it's something again we still have to be mindful of even though the, the intention of the document was to be signed digitally i'll just go through a, a couple more and then um we'll We'll, we'll get make sure we get back to everybody who hasn't had their questions answered. We'll we'll make sure we copy all these. these yeah, lots of great questions. <laughs> There's a lot, but which is great too. Um, with annual reviews, is there another place we can view the signed solvency resolutions other than via the notification tab? Uh, I thought there was, Jeevan, but I think that that's a great question. We'll, we'll come okay, back. Okay, I'll take that offline and 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 we'll get back with the answer. Yeah, yeah, we'll come back to that one, Caroline Crofts. That's that's a great question. Um, it's if it, it it turns out if it turns out one email address out of multiple recipients is incorrect, do we need to resend the entire document, or can we just send resend it to the person where it was incorrect? Uh, in this case, you'll need to cancel the document and resend. And resend. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah. We're, we're through the BGU integration. I'm not sure what it's like. A, yeah, uh, look, directly from Fuse Sign, you've got all of the options to just update a mobile number or an email address, and it just it will just resend to that person. Um, so, yeah, you do have control over um, changing those details on a live active bundle. And also cancelling, you know, the, the, the comment before about, you know, five people sign and one doesn't, you will have the ability to pull that pull that back. So there's a bit of flexibility when it comes to um, lots of large sort of moving parts when it comes to lots of signers and lots of documents. 
probably yeah. with, within BGL, you don't need that that level of flexibility because of the um, there's not as many moving parts. They're very you know set documents, so you kind of want a bit more rigor around that. But if you sign directly, because we're sending all sorts of different things in any combination, you've got full control. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, from Vicky, shareholder change docs and shareholder docs changes are currently two separate uploads. Does this mean they have to be two separate package or document packs within site within FuSign? Absolutely. They'll be two different processes. So that'll be two different credits. Um, and okay, so okay, so I'm just having a look. We've pretty much got through the bulk of them and um, there's, there's still a few more here, but what as I said, what we will do. Um, is that we will get a copy of all the questions. We know which ones pretty much we've answered versus those which we haven't, and we'll come back to people individually if that's okay. Um, so is there anything else you'd like to add to this, Mel or Jeevan? I'll, I'll just have, because I know there was a question on it, but there's a, there's a, there's a few features with um, CAS360 that will be um, coming in the short term as well. So one is SMS authentication. So I did demonstrate that with Simple Fund, but it, it's coming in CAS very soon. The other, I saw a question pop up about being able to witness a document and have the um, witness be able to input their details there as well. Um, and the order of signing for CAS 360 as well. So um, there's a few documents there. So some of those, those features are, are coming soon in um, shortly into CAS. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll just say, any feedback that you do have, um, please provide either directly to either team um, and we're more than happy to um, address what we can. And look, and um, I, I'd just like to say to everybody, thank you for joining us and thank you so much for the, for the questions. And you've given us a lot to walk away with too. And um, with any software product, there's always improvements that can be made. And I can tell you one of the things that we are good at is listening and making sure that we deliver the changes to make your experience and that of your clients as best as possible. So just on, on behalf of um, BGL, I'd like to thank, and, and FuSign, FuseWorks, FuSign, I'd just like to thank you for joining us today. Um, so much appreciate your support. We are really excited about what we've been able to deliver in this space and in particular the price point. It's, it is very competitive, it is very good and there's a number of reasons why we're able to do this but what we wanna ultimately be able to do is just to continue to provide you and your clients with a great experience and there's so many great tools and functionalities that will allow you to do that now but I can assure you the commitment to build on this going forward and to better the experience is 100% there. So please send your feedback through we do listen, we do make changes, we put out updates very often, and we look forward to delivering to you in future an even more um, user-friendly and an even better experience for you and your clients. So thank you, Mel, as always. Just love working with you. Thank you, Jeevan. I've been working with you for too long, so I'm not going to tell you all that. <laughs> um, <laughs> you tell me every day, um, but um, oh, I tell you every day. Um, but um, it's a great partnership. And look, and, and just from my feedback, we we run a Slack channel, and we're, where there's a number of us in that Slack channel, and there's pretty much feedback going to and forth nearly every day. And the beauty about it is that when client feedback comes through, they're onto it, they're discussing, they're looking for ways to improve it. So. When changes are requested and improvements are done, I can assure you that it won't be years before things are done. It's usually a sprint release or several weeks, but we'll do whatever we can to make sure that you have the best experience. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your trust. Thank you for believing in us. And um, we look forward to working with you in the future. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. Daniel. Thanks, everybody, for mm -hmm. attending. Really um, enjoyed all of the questions. And yeah, mirror Daniel's um, comments that we're very committed to, to making sure that this is, um, yeah, an amazing, amazing integration. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye.